That wasn't a funny one. Why did you say LOL? I laughed at the squirrel with big nuts. I didn't laugh at what you said about my mother. Whatever. Howdy ho, neighbors. What up? Hey. How are we? I'm good. I'm realizing now that every I'm, I look like a blueberry. Kind of. I don't want to say anything, yeah. You look like uh, Ray, a blueberry. Name? A blueberry is a fruit. I know what a blueberry is. I have it in my muffins. Thank you. <laughs> Put it in your mother's muffin. <laughs> you like that one, didn't you? I did. A little milk with a spoon. Lap it up. <laughs> Jeez, wow, we're getting graphic now. It's all right. It's all right. I well, like how are breakfast. you? I'm good. I'm good. Doing good. You look good. Thank you. Oh. You're on vacation here, Billy, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Yep. So that means our times of recording are going to be very specific on when we can and when we can't. Yeah, he – And we're doing another one after this? Yes, yes. Bill. Jesus Christ. You honestly have nothing to do. And true. you know what? You know what? You know what's great that what we're doing after this is Simple Minds Festivus. Festivus for the rest of us. We're airing our grievances. And let me tell you, boys, I got quite a few for you assholes. Perfect. Great. Perfect. One of them may or may not be Bill's schedule. <laughs> Weird. That might be one of mine, too. The idea that Bill on vacation is harder to, to wrangle in than mm-hmm. Bill working. Mm-hmm. Is uh is daunting, it's daunting. The best news is he's gonna be all hopped up on biscuits, so we we should just be <laughs> no. Able that's to not it. Not catch yet. Catch him on the couch. Not yet. No. That's not until January, baby. Billy Badwing. Oh biscuits. shit, that's right. How long is just your standard bender vacation coming up here for the holidays? I go back the twenty eighth for Fuck. two days. Fuck. Next week's gonna suck. Next week's gonna be terrible. Does your employer have those two days marked on the calendar as completely insignificant? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you have to. There yeah. will be nothing accomplished on these days. No, you no. should tell me this week. I try to do as little as possible because I knew I was going on vacation. And it started early. I only work three days a week this week. <laughs> nice. That a boy. Snow day. Snow day. S- snow day. We got like two feet up here. Yeah, it's crazy. How was your snow day, Bill? It's great. I had a great you, day. You got the Tinder Whore Army out there shoveling? No, there's no Tinder Whore Army anymore. I've uh, released them. Oh, could oh, you? Oh, Billy Boy's in love. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. He's like Charlie Brown with the little hearts around his head. And he just flies. And she is like, coming boop. over after this and making me dinner. So, I mean, I can't complain. After this or after the next one? After yeah, the next like 7.30, 7.45-ish. So that's, oh, oh, so we're going to have another interview tonight. Oh, Good. Great. Let's drag Great. this out, right? <laughs> that's my stop time. <laughs> Oh, Bill, oh, the fucking queen has a hard out. <laughs> He's got a hard out at 7.30. He's got to go. Yeah. Uh-huh. What a did you not get, did you pay for the Zoom? Because I thought we were going to end that other one early. What? The Zoom, like it didn't stop at 40. So the last one on the interview we just did. I don't know, Bill, I'm not a time traveler. It was what it was. Uh, welcome to Silver Mind Sports Show, Friday headlines, December 18th. Uh, welcome to the show. Let me get a burr. like rich is gonna make you cry during our festivus Dude, I, have a, I have a heart, black heart you can't make me cry no he's one gonna makes try me, no he's one gonna makes try. me cry my own tears <laughs> he's gonna try we both are maybe it's a dose of bad cop bad cop for billy boy tonight that's fine i'll do bad cop myself if you don't want that <laughs> i don't know you're gonna bad cop yourself no, I'm going to bad cop both of you, just myself. Oh. Ooh. What's fucking new? <laughs> yeah. You're me to me every fucking show. So my are you, tell- dick. My father tells me. Mm. <laughs> well, you, know, you know I we- know you're a bitch. Your dad fights your fights for you. Ooh, oh, we nice. talked to a gay guy one time, and now we don't have to worry about Billy beep words anymore. 
Rich puts the fear of God in me, so I can't have any more beeps. We're progressive, baby. We're progressive on this That's network. Right. Timestamp. You know what would be, uh, you know, if this, if this show never makes it, which we're guaranteed to make it uh, <laughs> with, our, with our level of uh, professionalism and, uh, you know, stardom. But if for, what, for some reason it doesn't, we could just send it in to middle schools for bullying advice <laughs> and what it looks like on the internet. <laughs> Just Don't show him after kid. the well, and we'll just use Ray's picture after our, his Tampa Bay take, where he looked like he was legitimately Leave going to cry. Leave that fuck alone. Dude, Leave was, it alone. He, he was, was going to cry. Fucking shook. <laughs> he was very shook. Looked like his mom just died. Yeah. You put it. Did you put it on the Google Drive? Because has Bill seen this yet? Not yet. I but, held back the tears, you sons of bitches. I. The Dude, best part is the waiting for the his second pick. His hands fucking shaking like. <laughs> He's all God nervous. didn't know what to do. Please God, make this work. That's well, you know, after two Sunday social hours, we're rolling through lists, and you know, you got Carl Anthony Towns on one of them, backed up by some other piece of shit. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's a tough. It was a tough go for you, Ray. Hopefully, yeah, your just festivus throw the comes out better. Let's just throw the obvious one out right now. <laughs> I can't wait for Sunday show. <laughs> my We've been Son teasing the shit out of this. I We've can't been, wait for it. I guess I got to edit that, huh? Okay, welcome to the show. Boys, uh, I know that the Patriots are dead in the water, but it is still football season. There is still life here. We have to talk about life beyond Tom Brady. It has sucked so far. I know he's dead to you, Bill, but the Patriots are not dead. Uh, They play the Dolphins this week. Um, I, I, we've done a lot of talk about the Patriots. I think we're well vested in what's wrong with the Patriots and, um, you know, hopefully what they do or what they should do or, or what they can do to fix them moving into next year. What I want to talk to you about is this AFC East that everybody is talking about, uh, shaping up to be, uh, good specifically, obviously the dolphins bill. Do you believe in what they're building down there in the in Miami? What I mean, what's their ceiling? What, what however you want it, what what's what's an NFL lifetime? Three years. Um, this is call it year two of them building something down there. So you know, in a five year span, you know, what do they look like? Do you believe in what they got going on down there? Yeah, I, I think so. I li- I've actually liked a lot of the moves uh, Brian Flores has made. He's he stockpiled a lot of draft picks. He's got Houston's draft pick this year was number one um, their first round draft pick and you're seeing that this team's going to go as far as Tua is going to take them you know if, if Tua lives up to the hype of being number six quarterback taken or number five the sky's the limit for this team I think Buffalo is the best team in the AFC East right now but Miami's right there I don't, I don't think they're going to compete for the division because I think Buffalo is kind of going to take a firm grasp of that division especially if Patriots can't figure out the quarterback situation you know, they, there's no quarterback there going forward. So, I mean, you look is Tua can live up to the hype and be real. He's shown flashes this year. He's shown flashes as a rookie, and then he's shown terrible games as a rookie too. But, again, he's learned on the job. I really like Brian Flores. I thought he did a great job of the Patriots defense here. You're kind of seeing it there, the number one scoring defense in the NFL, uh, entering last week against Kansas City. So, I mean, he started on defense. He's made the right moves. He's got those guys playing hard for him. Everybody like, seems to like him, and I, I, they're well coached. And I think they, you know, they're going to compete for the pl- uh, playoffs every every year for probably the next five or six years, in my opinion. And especially because I think there's too many question marks with the Patriots right now. Ray, yeah, I agree. Their second best defense in the NFL. Brian Flores put his blueprint on it from up here in New England down there, and uh, you know, bringing guys like Kyle Van Noy, who we thought was just another flash in the pan from Belichick, but he's actually producing down there. Uh, Xavier Howard is leading the league with nine interceptions right now. So they got a really good secondary uh, Two is the big piece that, you know, what if, if he can actually be that guy, they could be a legit contender against Josh Allen and the uh, Buffalo Bills. So yeah, second place in the AFC East fighting for a wild card every year is what I think their ceiling is. Nope. Dolphins suck. They're always going to suck. Here's what you're missing. Brian Flores is a piece of the Belichick coaching tree name a, a coach of the patriot of belichick's coaching tree that has succeeded to a level that we're talking about right now none the answer is none bill o'brien i mean he wants bill o'brien titles. is the perfect example of what i'm about to tell you bill bill o'brien and those houston texans underachieved for years for years and then they handed the organization over to him and he fucking destroyed it well, brian flores good, i'm not calling brian flores bill o'brien but brian flores is a terrific motivator he's a defensive coordinator i don't know how tactically good of an offense uh, of a uh, head coach that he is yes he's got a team work, uh, playing hard for him over the last couple of years when a team is on the rise and young and aspiring that's one thing once you hit roadblocks once you hit a couple disappointing playoff losses once you miss the playoffs when you're supposed to make them once you hit this shit that uh you know makes people discouraged what do you do then that's my question 
and none of these Belichick disciples have been able to get over that hump. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm playing by, by the numbers here. Why should Bl- Brian Flores be any different? You don't know anything about Brian Flores that should make him different. I don't know anything about Brian Flores that should make him different. We don't know what his drafting style is. We don't, he has no history in the league. All I can go off of is what has come out of the Patriots organization. And Tua sucks. He's not going to be anything. They should draft a quarterback with Houston's pick at number whatever it's going to be. Four, You're crazy. three, You're two. You're fucking crazy. Tua stinks. You're not going to give up on him after his rookie year. You I mean, should. If you have a chance at one of these three, top three guys coming out, you should. And you should trade him and get another pick in the mid, mid to late first. You should. Because Tua Tagovailoa is not going to be a good enough quarterback for the Miami Dolphins to win a, uh, to win a Super Bowl. And one of these three kids might be. Because they're better than him right now. I, that's, uh, uh, I, I don't know how you don't want to argue that. So I understand on the surface, uh, giving up your n- number five overall pick from a year before is bad news. But the Arizona Cardinals did it just a year ago, and they have – what is he, Ray? Quarterback of the uh, Arizona Cardinals, Bill's Arizona Cardinals. You've been saying it all year. Future MVP. I don't like your MVP. I don't like to say it all the time because I don't no, like – No, I know. You don't, want, you don't want to gloat on that take. I don't. So uh, and I know that was a, a, a new coaching – or you know, um, a new coach came in and, and made that move. But two is not the guy, man. Just look at him play. He, he doesn't have the arm. He throws a shitty ball. He's small. He's got, a, he's got a fucking fractured hip. Bill's getting texts from his butt buddy. No, no. Uh, uh, breaking news. Jerry West allegations of uh, tampering. Nope. Houston expanding trade talks for James Harden with the rest of the NBA. <laughs> uh, Ex- do, do. Yeah, he's uh, – Sorry, my engaging. simple mind is still comprehending what you said. So, the, the Houston there, So, is, hold on. Let me read it. Houston is engaging in uh, talks about James Harden deal with several playoff caliber teams in both conferences. So it's does not, he have a is, trade exception, though? Nope. No. There's not many guys in the NBA that does um, trade, like, uh, what a fucking – no trade clause. Trade there's clause. very, very many. I mean, very few guys. I think Kobe had one. I believe LeBron has one, but that's about it. There wasn't. There's not a many. I don't know. KG had maybe. one. Paul Pierce had one. They both had a wave to go to New Jersey. But it's not common in the NBA. I'm, just, I'm just saying, like it is in like oh, baseball. Okay, whatever. Stuff. Either way, if they don't, so all right, no problem. We'll get to that. Uh, Harden's a piece of shit. Breaking news. I guess that's breaking news. I, if the if Houston was not expanding their, if Houston was just listening to general manager James Harden on where he wanted to go to get the deal done and he doesn't have a no-trade clause, then Houston are a bunch of fucking buffoons. You should yep. be trading him to the highest bidder right now or a month ago. What are you talking about? What mm-hmm. the fuck are you talking about, Houston? You're expanding, you're expanding the trade talks. What a bunch of clowns. Uh, we'll get there. We'll get back to the NBA. Uh, Julian Edelman's playing on Sunday. Should he, Ray? Does, this, uh, does, does he project up the amp? I don't know what the word I'm looking for. Sorry, Simple Minds. Um, as You're a fan us? favorite, one of the you know one of the fan favorites in Patriots lure, does this help it coming back at 34, bad knee, bad team, gonna grit it out for the rest of the season, or is he showcasing what's the what's the deal here? Are you happy he's coming back? I'm happy he's coming back. That's what a true player should be doing. I mean, your team sucks, like you said. You're out of the playoffs. There's three games left, and he's gonna go ball out, you know, and see what he has left to prove. I mean, maybe he's this is gonna base his decision for next year about retirement. But at least he's going to go out there and see what the fuck he's got. You know, you got a bad knee, wrap it up, put the spit on it, and go out there and fucking catch some balls. That's what a true athlete does, Rich. Thank you, Raymond. Bill, uh, is he got another year left on this deal? Yeah, one more because he signed an extension. I think, I believe it was after the uh, MVP. Guarantee it's got to be up, though. He's got to be I'm pretty sure. I think, cut. what do you sign for like a three for, I think he was making nine million, yeah, roughly. Eight, eight to nine million per. Yeah. But he's got to be, uh, he's got to be eligible to be cut. It might be a dead cap hit, though. I, I'd be no, probably not much. Is. Probably not much, you know. But I mean, I give him credit coming back. I mean, he's it's kind of been the definition of his career. He's tried to battle back from all these injuries, broken foot, you know, ACL, all that. I mean, it shows he's a gamer. I don't think it means much. I think this is probably his curtain call with the Patriots. You know, you got three games left. I don't expect him to be on the team next year. Um, he's lost a step. I don't. I don't trust that knee. He battled shoulder injuries last year. He gutted it through that. So, I mean, that's the type of player he is. Is it going to help the team? Absolutely not, because Cam sucks. 
But I mean, at least it brings a little bit of leadership back. But I think this is more of this is the last three games of my career. I don't expect him to be playing in the NFL next year because I don't think anyone's going to take a chance on him. There's too much injuries, and he's a product of of uh, Tom Brady. You're, you're kind of seeing it with Cam Newton. I get it. Cam Newton sucks, but I think he's more of a product of Brady than anything. So I disagree I, with that. When the first few games, he was making big catches for for Cam Newton in his shitty arm. I mean, uh, you know. Obviously, the, the offense wasn't great, but especially in that Seattle game, I remember some, some specific diving catches that he was making. That long one, tur- he had 50 yard. Julian Edelman has yeah. turned himself into a, ter- a terrific wide receiver. At his prime, Julian Edelman was a top 10 wide receiver in the league, not just a product of Tom Brady. Yes, Tom Brady made him. The Patriots made him who he is, but he turned himself into the guy. It's not his last year in the NFL. He'll get a, he'll get a job somewhere, probably with Tommy. Um, but if you're the Patriots and you like Gunnar Oshevsky as much as they have played him to, to, to make us think that they like Gunnar Oshevsky and you've gone from Troy Brown to Julian Edelman to uh, – I'm uh, sorry, Welker. Troy Brown to Wes Welker. Welker to Julian Edelman. If they think uh, – you know, they bet, drafted that Berrios guy that they thought was the next guy. They tried to get Adam Humphreys. They tried to get Cole Beasley. That's a key part of their offense. We know that. If they expect Gunnar to be that next guy – uh, there's still value in Edelman in that position. And he's a Patriot, man. As much as he's a Brady Bobo, he loves Bill Belichick for the opportunities that he gave him. Yeah. And I think Edelman is a loyalty type of guy. Obviously, he has a ton for Tom, but I think he has a ton for Bel- Belichick too. Uh, I would not be surprised if you saw him back here in a minimum deal. Maybe because of what you're saying, Bill, no one else wants to take a chance on him, and Belichick will bring him into the locker room. But um, he also didn't get the captain's nod this year too so maybe there's something iffy going on there i don't know and the i'll back be glad to, to see back... him play if these are the last if the, uh, i'll be glad to say uh to see him play uh one more game instead of the, the way we saw him go out at the beginning of the season as a patriot hopefully he can finish the season healthy maybe catch some balls and we can remember him like that yeah and to back up your bill point with edelman you heard it in, in 2014 when they were on the stage and the in the mic'd up stuff i'll do anything for you coach thanks for the best year of my life blah blah blah. And then you saw two more super bowls i mean he he loves belichick so i mean that's probably why he's trying to gut it out i mean there is a slim chance you can make the playoffs slim but i mean there is a chance I, they're dead to us i think the road is dead in our eyes but there is a slim chance if you ask big dumb ray on the bottom of our screen here i said it was a done chance. i said they were done do you believe it, though, Ray? Yeah. 37 your heart of hearts, guys. 37% chance. On Sunday, we're, we're watching the game, and Cam fumbles it away after a terrible sack. Are you going to text us, fucking A, I'm so fucking mad, uh, because you have, you have hopes that they might be able to win out? And yeah, I'm going to text you. stabbing oh. videos. No, I'm going to send you a text and say the nachos are done. No, so I'm pulling uh, out of the go. other. Yeah. You know? Keep dabbing on those asses, Ray. Uh, yeah, listen up to our uh, uh, Festivus for the rest of the show, and we talk about airing some grievances out. Maybe I'll maybe I'll edit in uh, when Cam got signed and you fucking turds reacted. Your reaction to Cam getting signed quite a few months ago there. Maybe that'll make the show. It's like the first time Bill ever got a Tinder like uh, match or whatever. That's that's how excited he got. <laughs> Fireworks, fucking, baby! Ah, yeah, fucking a, we say, say, Fireworks and boners over in the Queens Landing. Mm. Uh, shifting gears here, Celtics like preseason. Get a boner. Oh, uh, twenty year old jokes. jokes. Uh, Celtics preseason game one. I know Bill didn't watch it. Ray, did you watch any of it? I caught the highlights. No. Okay, let me give you my uh, way too early takes out of these things. Let me just list them down, and I'll get your take. You know your repercussions on any of it. Rookies look pretty good. That Pritchard kid, uh, four year starter in the in, uh, in college, looks like he knows how to play basketball. Got a Shoot. pretty decent shot. Uh, James Naismith and his peach baskets looked shaky, looked nervous, but his shot, the first shot he took, was in swish. Hopefully he can learn how to play uh, and be a three and D guy for him. Jeff Teague, this is the guy they needed on the bench last year. His defense sucks, but offensively he's crafty. He's a problem. He's perfect guy coming off the bench for the Celtics. If Kemba's healthy and if Marcus Smart is not a piece of shit. Points, right? Game on to my Bill. I don't know if you heard me before we started the segment. I said I'm going to list them all off, and then Sorry. you can take it after that. Uh, on to my next point. Marcus Smart is a hardo. He took two charges. Was diving for balls. I don't like his haircut. It looks like little worms falling out of his head. He's still shooting bad three pointers. Trade this fuck guy with that trade exception and bring me someone else i'm done with marcus smart i'm saying that right now i declare it at the beginning of 2021 season i'm done with marcus smart he he's been he's been given the third role of this team it he, his head is bigger than a balloon he's going to be a problem uh speaking of problems bill your boy tom lord time lord sucks flat out done done with him too 
Get him out of here. Trade his fucking ass. Tatum, if Tatum is not on the court and Kemba is not on the court, this team's in trouble. That's the yep. only offense they have. Jason Tatum is still not a superstar. All that shit I wanted him to do with his offensive game, didn't do. Same with Jalen Brown. Did not advance himself as a playmaker. I'm going to give him the half of this season to advance that because they had no offseason to, to, to help their game. So I'm going to cut him a break there. But watching Jason Tatum haphazardly dribble into the lane, try and spin move and throw it up or pass into nobody is a still a fucking problem, and it's going to be a problem. Uh, it's going to fuck over my prediction that they're the number two team in the East. Gentlemen. Sorry, uh, I don't know if you know this, Rich, but it was a uh, <clears throat> preseason game. <laughs> Not a lot of that really mattered. I mean, yes, Marcus Smart. Yes, I am done with Marcus Smart. 2021, let's get Marcus Smart out of Boston. You still think you're Allen Iverson. You're still jacking up the threes. You can't make a three. Stop shooting the fucking threes. Time Lord, Bill, if you just watch the guy, he can't play a lick of defense. He, can, he doesn't show up to fucking team meetings. He's always late. That's how he got the name Time Lord. He's fucking lost, man. Yeah, he's he doesn't like know what he's doing. He, he's he looks like, like a, a lost puppy dog. A baby deer out there. Like, he can't keep his feet. He's just, like, rolling in circles. He doesn't know how to play the game. He has no feel for it. He's athletically gifted, you know, probably the most athletic person out there. But he's dogging it, or or I don't think he's dogging it. I think he wants to be good. I just don't think he's smart enough to be good. Also, Daniel Tice and Tristan Thompson did not play. So, I mean, obviously, that's another factor we get up to be playing into this and. I just want to see what Jason Tatum does when the regular season starts. He's going to be playing 35 minutes. He's going to have an expanded role after last season. So let's see what happens when that, you know, the tip off actually happens. I agree with you before you go, Bill. I think Tatum will be okay. Uh, I think his late game stuff is still a gigantic question mark. Um, that part of his game that I mentioned before still needs to be improved. Jalen Brown, his playmaking ability needs to be improved without Gordon Hayward. Those two things stood out to me in that game, but you're right. Without Kemba, your starting center last year, Daniel Tice. Your probable starting center this year, in Tristan Thompson. You're missing three guys there. That uh, three out of you know a rotation of seven or eight. That's a that's a pretty big deal to be missing. Um, so it's it's certainly going to look different. But it's like the, it's like the Cam Newton comparison. You can talk about all the things around him, but just look at the guy in a vacuum. Can he throw the ball? No. Can Jason Tatum successfully drive the lane and be in control? Not as much as he needs to be. That's the way I kind of look at it. Yeah, and Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, was they shot four for 25. Yeah, bad shooting night, but bad, I didn't have a problem with any of that. I didn't have a problem no, with that. No, I mean, it definitely stood out a little bit. But, again, the no offseason thing, I mean, they just they really started training camp, what, a week ago? And they're already yeah. kind of going in. You, they played to the Eastern Conference Finals. They didn't, They got a really crunched, uh, you know, tra training camp, offseason, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I, I liked – I expect them both to be good. I don't think – I just it, I don't take a lot of stock in the first preseason game. But, again, I, I do a little bit with, with Teague. You know, I, I, I have high hopes for him. I said earlier in one of our preview shows, if we can get 80% of what he was in Atlanta, this team could go places. It's going to make up for the, a little bit of the loss of Kemba early on. And especially if you can get consistent bench scoring, is which the Celtics have lacked since – 2008 honestly you know with James Posey and all those guys coming off the bench so I mean if you can get consistent 12 to 15 points a game out of Jeff T coming off the bench I mean it's going to solidify a lot of stuff that we've been bitching about constantly over the start of our show right so I mean you didn't see Tristan Thompson so I mean again you're not going to put a lot of stock into this game because once you get Thompson in there Tice back you're going to kind of see what you got for a starting lineup you're going to see what depth you have and then again once Kemba come back I don't I don't put a lot of stock in it they're going to play again tonight I believe they're playing New Jersey tonight game two I think it's Friday Friday sorry game oh yeah tonight was this was released well done, way to go Bill, Bill. Well, well, wow. time lord we got the time our own time lord but yeah I mean Again, I didn't watch a lot of it. I kind of saw the highlights. But, again, to your point, Robert Williams doesn't look great right now. Again, it, it's the same thing. It's the first preseason game. He showed pretty good flashes in the playoffs. I think there, there's a lot of talent there. He's definitely freaky athletic. Um, but he's still young. He's 22 years old. He's still going to grow into this role. You know, he's not going to play a ton of minutes, 12 to 15 a game, depending on foul trouble with Tyson Thompson. So, I mean, you're, you're talking about the third big guy off the bench at this point. So, I mean, if you can – kind of see a little bit of progression with him I'll be happy I mean if he could at least block some shots grab some rebounds especially on the offensive end which I think the Celtics have lacked for the last 10 years is offensive rebounding and if he can at least do that and put some you know putbacks there it's going to help this team a little bit I don't Bill I don't, he yep. sucks 
I would rather have Taco Fall in that position than him. At least Taco Fall can stand there and be a and, and put his hands up in the Watch lane shots. and be a and be a problem. <laughs> Robert Williams could be running into the corner, at, trying to block a shot from 35 feet and be nowhere to be found to get a rebound. He is not good. He has no awareness. He should, hopefully, will be gone midseason. I, I look at Robert Williams. Marcus Smart, they're never going to trade Marcus Smart, but I would love to see Robert Williams, Marcus Smart as key pieces, Romeo Langford as key pieces that, that they can ship out of here. You know who I like? You know who I love? Not to toot a uh, green team horn here, but Grant Williams. I know that he's a second-year guy, and I know that he's not a flashy guy. I fucking love Grant Williams. Knows how to play the game. He's undersized, so he can't really compete at, a, at that high level, but he does all the things right. Will hit an open shot. Um, he's a playmaker. He's a tough kid. He's 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 all you need. You don't yeah. need Marcus Smart if you have Grant Williams and Tristan Thompson. No. What about that guy Green? He started. Right. Yeah. Javante he Green. Sucks. He's yeah, nobody. He's, he's an absolute nobody. He's a guy. That's it. He but has no, no business Pritchard? being on that team. Yeah. Richard's gonna be a, a contributor on this team in the backup point guard role. Um, because he's smart and knows how to play the game. I think he'll probably be a defensive liability. People will learn how to beat him. And uh you know, he'll have off nights. But uh, being behind Teague, if Cummins comes back, he'll get buried. Naismith's the guy you need to. Yeah, I think Naismith, we're all pretty – I'm not super high on him, but I'm high on that shot. You know, so, again, if we can kind of slide him into that Kyle Korver role, it, again, when you need some big shots, if he, if his shot, he's the best shooter coming out of the draft. You know, you kind of saw a little bit, again, in your first shot, he drained a three. Like, like he's been in the NBA for many years. So, I mean, as long as that shot develops, I think the Celtics will be okay with their bench because I expect him to play meaningful minutes. I mean, he was a 14th pick, right? 13, 14th pick. I say he's going to be the sixth 14. guy off the, the so, first I mean, he's got to be, I mean, at this point, especially until Kemba comes back, like I feel like this guy's going to be an important piece of this offense. There's going to be a lot of growing pains with him because I, I think his defense is lacking. But as long as we can get that shot, this is what we're going to need. And if he can shoot like this – I think he's going to solidify the bench a little bit, you know. And, we'll and see. Barry Ojale, you know, I'm, if he's taking oh, that Ojale minutes, that please, guy off please. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't say that in one of your three guys that you. That, that's how much I've. That's how much I've made myself forget about him, Ray. <laughs> I hate Shem. I mean, nothing against him. Whatever, he's worked hard, but he just stinks. I don't understand why the Celtics just invest so much in their own guys in this situation. Go All get right, me. Get- a, go get me Isaiah Thomas. At a you minimum, get, yeah. very hey, ideal. Rich, you got to get rid of four, one of those four that you mentioned. Which one? Ojale. You for? <laughs> yeah, goodbye. No, no doubt. Get out of here. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. Yeah. Uh, but just the last piece of this, um, uh, some more overreaction to the one preseason game. I am 1,000, 1,000% on board on going and bringing in another guy or two at the trade deadline here. You Dump some of these fucking young kids, even if you are – even if you can, even if you refuse to trade Marcus Smart as a big piece to get something big back, dump some of these kids and and consolidate that into someone who can contribute. Hopefully, who has some term left. But if not, hopefully, maybe you can resign them under the bird rights. But Jesus Christ, just go get some more solidified NBA players. You can see what it does when you have Jeff Teague there, and I guarantee you're going to see it when you have Tristan Thompson there. Just solidify the fucking team and let the Jays do their thing and grow and become superstars, hopefully. Yeah, and that's one of the things that they've also been lacking outside of the bench scoring and the big guy is the veteran leadership. Get some proven NBA talent, especially guys that has, have won in this league and the guys that can kind of mentor the Jays. They're the future of this franchise. This is everything that's going to go forward. You're building your team around these two guys. If you can keep bringing in veterans that help them grow, that will mesh with their – you know, hothead style, their best friends, their, their click, but they can help mentor them. You've seen these guys get better and better every year, but I think adding a veteran leadership will, will kind of teach them how to win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like no, they, they, this is what they need. You know, what's even uh, as important now that we're thinking about it and Jeff Teague's on the team, Tristan Thompson has won a championship before. Jeff Teague is not Jeff Teague has played in some big games and championship games, but you know what Jeff Teague has done? He's lost. He's yeah. lost bad. So like just that experience Tatum and Brown, smart to a degree, I guess, but Tatum and Brown don't know what it feels like to lose in the NBA. They've made an a, a East Champ Conference Finals every single year of their career. Like Basically, they, yeah. you know, no, literally. No. No? They missed one. T- Kyrie year, they missed, they lost to Milwaukee. The, oh, it's yeah. like three out of four years for Tatum. Ray. <laughs> 
that shit eating grin on his fucking face. Go ahead. Here's your time, Ray. This is your your here you your time go, buddy. To shine. Here you go. Go ahead, we'll, boy. We'll, we'll go, sit well, back and, and we'll no no no. Let Rich. Let's, let's, I don't want to toot toot on this because we've we've come to your side in this specific scenario. We were all on board with this too. Gordon Hayward, after one single preseason game with Thanks the Charlotte speaker. Bobcats and 120 million guaranteed dollars mm-hmm. has an injury and has been sidelined <laughs> and it's not a minor injury it's a major injury to his finger the way that i have heard it is it basically rips the muscle off your bone on i think it's his index finger of his shooting hand pretty they're important when you're a shooter too, which is kind of weird like it's day to day charlotte day charlotte they're just... well it sounds like it's coming from the celtics yeah he'll be back he snapped his ankle, but he'll be back shortly. It's no, Charlotte, it, Bill. It's the South. They're still using Civil War doctors down there. They're not quite sure exactly what. Oh, so what, his what. finger got cut off then. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They're, he, they're, he, Ronnie he's either day to day or that. they're going to have to amputate. We're not sure. Ray, Go ahead, the floor Ray, is yours. Away. It's time for this man to retire. You are injury prone. <laughs> get the fuck out of this league. You, you listen to your wife, Robin, to go to Charlotte, get out of Boston because, oh, you have bad luck. I don't like the cheese guy, the cheese vendor, or whatever the mar- market. You did people. like the cheese vendor. Well, fuck That was her only friend, dummy. Yeah, yeah whatever. Sorry, Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. We told you. didn't mean it. Me and Sorry. Rich told you we weren't going to interrupt. But, but yeah. this, guy needs, this guy needs to call it a day, go into the video game league, and just play fucking Fortnite and fucking – Call of Duty all day long because you can't get hurt doing that. Maybe you get carpal tunnel, but you David ain't going to break David, anything. David Bro- oh, fuck you, Rich. you ain't going to break anything. It's time for Gordon Hayward, Glass Gordon, oh, to retire. I don't understand why you're so mad about this. This is not I'm our not problem. Mad. This is not our problem anymore. Why am Celtics I mad? dodged the bullet. As I'm much no, but let me ask you, Bill, I'm because I know, I know Ray's answer. Has, Bill, has, Danny already, already run, has Danny already won this situation in this trade right now? As Ray shakes his head yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's you why not. Ray's excited. That's you why everyone's excited. a hundred and twenty million dollar player that's already injured. Game one, game fucking one. At this point, where we've talked about when he hurt his ankle in the playoffs, bad luck, right? Snap your ankle, then you hurt like in, in six first six minutes of your season with the Celtics. Done. Pretty bad luck. I mean, you came down off an alley oop, hurt your ankle in the playoffs. Again, you got rolled up on. You stepped on a guy's foot. You rolled your ankle. Kind of shitty luck could happen to anybody. Now you're seeing another kind of significant injury. This whole like bad luck bullshit thrown out the window. No, no, no. He's injury prone. Ass, now. Softy bitch, injury prone cunt licker. That's what he is. <laughs> Jesus, wow. I really, had a Billy Snip Snaps is full on. But I'm just done to, with Gordon bef- Hayward, before yeah. your question there. Ray- Let's not forget it. He's no, he's injury prone. I don't know if he's a pussy. I think he's tried hard to get back, but there are players that just fall into this. They just get hurt. Sony Michelle, they, they, it just happens. So, I mean, Gordon Hayward got his hand caught in LaMarcus Aldridge's Brokowski. Jersey. That seemed freak injury. Um, he had setbacks on his ankles. He had, he had um, a wrist problem. Remember he had a wrist problem at some point. So, mm-hmm. Uh, maybe some of that's pussy, but I think he, you know, I think he gutted it out in the bubble. I think he played on half a leg in there. So I did give him credit for all that, but yeah, I gave him ter- a little credit in terms of being a player that gets injured and is injury prone. He's it. And in terms of paying that guy, $120 million guaranteed. Idiots. Nope. Woof. Holy shit. And if the, and if the reports are correct that Denny wanted to play him 108, which I think is bullshit. I think he was never going to pay Gordon here with that money. Um, Good on Danny. So yeah, Danny won this. Danny oh, fucking fuck yeah. he lost it because he signed him initially, but he won it on this on this turnaround. We'll have to see what he does with that trade exception because if he gets nothing for him, I guess you know it'll be a wash to me. Especially yeah, I I, I have this weird feeling he'll let it expire too, and then we'll no, be- he's gonna do something, but it's not gonna be anything good. He's gonna get some Aaron Gordon or some nineteen million dollar player that is will disappoint us. Ray, Rich- go ahead. Rich, you're the smartest one on this panel. Um, Thank you. I've never been to Utah, but are the Mormons like gypsies and they just put curses on people? Is that why Gordon Hayward's getting hurt? He left there Utah, is... the Mormons put a little curse on him, so now he's breaking bones all the time. There is some magic in the Mormon, in the Mormon faith. That's why I've heard. Uh, how else do you think you know, they get 19 wives? The, uh, yeah, I, do, I, do I believe that the Mormons in the collective state and religion cursed Gordon Hayward? Yes, 1,000%. Thank you for bringing that up. You're welcome. Um, back to our breaking news, Bill. Yes, sir. James Harden. Uh, the reports out of Houston surrounding James Harden this can week. We, can we stop real quick? Go ahead, Ray. We never mentioned 
that James Harden on his first preseason game, we did mention it on our social medias, but we never talked about it. He went out on his first preseason game looking like me. <laughs> Fat motherfucker. Yeah, he looked Holy big. shit. The rumor was they gave him a, a double X, a double small jersey. So it hurt, it hurt his trade value that he looks so fat and out of shape. Bullshit. No, he's just fat. I mean, he's always been thick. Apparently, chicken wings are really good at strip clubs because that motherfucker has been the eating deal. So. He's Holy just been shit. on a late night fried food bender, um, just too. spiting the Houston Rockets. Um, and he and he turned down fifty million dollars a year. So, but the reports out of out of Houston are, um, how do I sum this up? Uh, what did I write to you guys? Oh, James Harden is an insufferable douchebag. That yeah. pretty much sums it up, right, Bill? Pretty much. I mean, if you talk about the rumors that have been flying now, I mean, I think there's a Sports Illustrated issue in the, uh, that came out two days ago. Basically, he was the GM. He made all the personnel decisions. He talked about um, with the team who they wanted to get, who um, they wanted to fire. All those decisions were made by him. All the practice schedules were also made by him because he did it around the cities that he wanted to party in. So he used to call in sick to practices and make the team move practices because he was taking his private jet on off days to go party in all the different cities that he wanted to and not telling the team. The team had no idea where he was. In the bubble, oh he was taking his God. COVID test at the time that teams were starting, at the, the, the team meetings were starting, film sessions, all that. And Russell Westbrook basically stood up and said, this is bullshit, let's start these meetings. And Dan and Tony's like, no, because as soon as he comes in, we're going to have to start it over again. He made all those moves. He wanted Chris Paul, made the Rockets go out and trade for Chris Paul. That, that um, relationship fizzled. Got rid of him, wanted his boy, Russell Westbrook. They didn't even last the season. And, again, I think he was behind the trade for Russell Westbrook. He's made literally every single move because Houston was scared to death that he was going to demand a trade, and they wanted to trade him out. The fact that he was going in his private jet to go party in different cities <laughs> in the world on off days is a fucking joke. I can remember the Celtics. Remember when Rondo wanted to stay in L.A. Yeah. on a road trip to have a birthday party, and everybody fucking – flipped out murdered him and james harden was quietly doing on the radar with his private jet and going fucking hanging his fucking jersey in the raptors of every strip club across america so i mean this is this guy is a piece of shit i did want him on the celtics to the start of our conversation a couple weeks ago but now i'm completely and utterly i want this guy no part of this guy ray ray say it with me now one two three two you Dude. Bill, you also had him on your uh, top 10 list as 1 through 10, I believe, when we did I had him at 10. Suck my dick. No, I also have him at 10 because he deserves to be a 10. Pure talent still? alone. But still? also, too, the thing Looking was – Looking like was, me out there on the fucking court right now, you think he deserves to be number 10? He was still on well, his pl- – he was still taking his I reserve to party. Ju- I reserve judgment to double. change my list. Yeah. If he's he sweat, if he's sweating doubles. buffalo sauce in, in the first week of the no, season, we can do a new top 10. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this fucking guy. And, and he demanded a trade saying that the Houston organization is in shambles and uh, dysfunctional. Big part yeah, yeah, because of you, hey, you, douche you bag. son of a bitch. If I was Houston, I'd just make him play it out. I would just make him eat chicken wings and play it out. Fake your injury, do whatever. Watch your career piss away down the fucking toilet. No, send him to the Knicks. Send him to the Knicks. Make him fucking die in New York. That's yeah. where you need to send him. I'd love to see. It. I'd still like like to see him go to the Nets and watch that whole thing burn. I oh, that'd be amazing. See it. Uh, so, what does that mean to you guys? Then the breaking news that the Rockets are expanding their their teams that they were willing to trade them. They're still under this guy's spell. We have to find out. Can Can anyone find out if he has a no trade clause? Why the fuck? Why would the Rockets not be expanding their the list of teams that they would trade him for from the beginning? What the hell does that even mean? League, dude, it's a player-driven league. Every fucking superstar controls their own fate, where they want to get traded. You don't see these big trades where these superstars are shocked that they got moved. Like, uh, every big superstar gets to pick where they want to go. And that's what Houston's cause. basically going to do. I guarantee they've already said, where do you want to go? And we're but this is not his last year of the deal. 2023. No, He's under contract. It does matter, Bill. It does matter. It, te- it absolutely It doesn't matter matters. in the league because the teams don't care because then you, you've seen it. Every big guy that's got traded will dictate where he Bill, wants to Bill, do go. you think Chris Paul wanted to go to Oklahoma City? Mm-mm. mm Probably no not. No fucking way. Oh, imagine that. That's one example. Back. Do you think Send Blake, do you think Blake uh, Griffin wanted to go to Detroit? But they're not superstars like James yes, Harden they, is right now. Chris Paul? Not Blake Griffin. 
Yeah, but again, an aging Blake veteran. Griffin, when he was today. traded, was one of the best players in the NBA. Yeah. What are you talking about, Bill? Bill doesn't know basketball. It's all right. He's got all three right. years left in his deal. He has no fucking leverage. They can send him to Minnesota, and he's got to play. Ooh, send him to it's Sacramento. Not a, it's not a situation where he can say, I'm not going to sign an extension, so I'm not going to that team. He's got years left on his deal. Yeah, he's boy. got term. <laughs> Bill's smoking. Bill's crushing fucking weed gummies. Uh, yeah. I'm on fucking vacation. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting primed up for this uh, airing of the grievances. I, I'm, I'm, Bill's, Bill's about just, to cry, so he just threw down, he just threw down <laughs> oh, some yeah. gummies. He just threw down a gummy. They're going to be so mean to me. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I, have, I have to be out of my mind. <laughs> James, look. All right. Let's, we can all agree on one thing. James Harden is a cunt. I want. I want nothing to do with him as a Celtics fan. I, you know, he. I. I've put this in the text or whatever. I said I've never been more right about a sports player, NBA player in my life. I've been saying for years this guy's a fucking loser. Toot toot. He's never gonna win shit. He's never gonna win shit. And he probably doesn't even want to win shit. He wants to eat chicken wings and and be a millionaire. Good for you. Have a fucking ball. Go in your private jet to wherever you're going. What an asshole. What an absolute asshole. Uh, all right. NHL news. Henry Lundqvist done for the season with a heart disease. Bill, you said hate to see it. Hate to see it. You know, I mean, Sarcasm, though? No. Fuck no. All I, right. I, I respect I Henry sure. Run, uh, Lundqvist. I think he's one of been, been one of the best goalies in the league since he started. It would have been nice to see him kind of move to a, a team that just is coming off a of Stanley Cup three years ago now. I mean, you hate to see a guy's career basically end because of a condition like this where he still wants to play. I don't expect him to play again with a heart condition like this. He's definitely sitting out the season. I mean, you hate to see a guy like a well-respected guy in the league that I have no hate for. I'm not. I'm a, a big hockey guy. I have no hate for Lundqvist. Yeah, he played for the Rangers and he used to own the Bruins, but it's like I don't have hate for him. So it sucks to see a guy go down like that. Is what I, I, Truthfully, you hate to see it. And especially a shit injury like that. It's like, come on. Yeah. Um. I might have accidentally paid for this. Yeah, you did. Yeah, that's why I was just letting you know. Or it's my work account, which is not good. Uh, whoopsies. Let's finish this up with some hot stove action. Bill, uh, who have the Red Sox signed today? No one. This has been the Seven Mind Sports Show, December 18th, Friday headlines. We'll see you on Sunday for the highly anticipated most Dude. hateable teams from growing up as long as it was from 1990 <laughs> and Ray starts us off with the most obvious pick don't don't yeah think of you're going to have to tune in Sunday to find out all right bye bye we love bye. you bye bye uh yeah let me go ahead and log out of this work account